Hello. Hi. Hello. Hey. How are you? Very good. Very good. Thank you so much for uh, coming on. Uh, we are big admirers of your work. Um, we've seen a ton of your your work as well. Oh, heard it, I suppose. Um, but uh, I want to thank you for coming on because we're, we're, we're really big fans of, of, of your talent. Um, uh, first off, I want to start off by asking, um, how how did you become a musician? When did you know that you wanted to become a musician? So go all the way back to your childhood, probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Uh, I think I, I was in tenth, last ten, uh-huh. in tenth standard, mm-hmm. with, uh, right? And I was do, giving my we have board exams. So I was giving my uh, my board exams, and the geography was the subject that I was studying. Mm-hmm. And uh, we was to we used to live in a society where the small rooms we used to live in small rooms, and we used to be call it chal system. Uh, just a few rooms. Far, I heard a sound while I was studying geography, preparing myself for the exam next day. I heard a sound, which was very, very fascinating. It was, it was like uh, I was very intrigued to know what that sound is. Mm-hmm. I left everything. I walked towards that room, and I went. Then I saw a bunch of my friends from the society who were fidgeting and playing with some instrument, and that instrument was this this small uh, box. Which had an electronic plate on it with the pencil attached, and you hit that pencil on that plate, and da 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 da. Very fast, that sound came, and I was like, "What the hell is this? I've never seen <laughs> anything like this." That that uh, did something inside me. That moment, of course, there were like a lot of guys in the room, eight, ten guys in the room. I thought, "Wow, I get to see it." I'm lucky I get to see this new thing, and I'll go back to study. I went back to my room, started studying, and after a few days, after my exams were over and all, after a few days, I don't know how that thing came in my house, landed in my house. One of my friends just came and dropped it and said, uh, "We are not able to figure out what is this. If you want to try? If you want to jam with this, go ahead." And that that was the day. That was a day for me. Everything really? started started uh, from that point. Everything huh. musically, I was so glued on glued to it. I was so hooked on to that thing. I, day I, day in day out, like for hours and hours, I used to sit on it, practice, figure out, learn, uh, hit the pencil, create songs, play known songs, or create my own tunes and stuff like that. So that I was like. A, so you got started late in life. In, in terms late, of, yeah. yeah, oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> and then at what point did it go from this um, this passion that you had for it and this interest that obviously was like this hobby, but I don't even want to call it a hobby. It was really a, a obsession as it is for most people who get into music. Then then what was the, what did you start to envision? Did you start to envision yourself as being uh, this all-inclusive composer who can write pop songs and do scores for films and sing or did you have a particular thing you thought okay i'm gonna do that uh uh i such any I, no n- nothing like that i had i was i i always believed in going with the flow wherever life takes me always always mm-hmm. believe in mm-hmm. not uh, a big big uh, i'm not a big fan of planning things uh, this is the way i would like to go but then when I was in college, you know, after the 10th standard, I finished my school, board exams. I, thankfully, I passed. Geography was also fine. <laughs> Marks were fine. <laughs> and, yeah, and then I uh, went to college. And in college, I, in the first year, near my, near my, uh, near the, very close to the area of my, where my college was, there was this band performing in the evening. And it was an English band called Aqua Flow. And they were playing uh, all international English songs at that time. The proper band. I got fascinated by not by the singer, but I was like intrigued by knowing what are these people behind it doing. Mm. What are these guys doing? How do how does this person know this particular note to play, or this is this is the rhythm, or this is the groove, this is the vibe. How these 
I was all into the guys behind uh, the singer, uh, and and that like I was crazy behind uh, uh, the idea of knowing what the arrangement of the music is, of the chord progression, the rhythm, the, all those things that are behind the singer. Mm-hmm. That kind of really uh, fascinated me a lot, and it t- till date it does. Till date, I've been thirty years into this, and still it uh, excites me. Oh wow! And did you? Yeah. You didn't start <laughs> singing until that time as well, or what? No, I was never into singing. Never, I was never into singing. Even singing never inter- interested me. Uh, actually, mm-hmm. actually speaking, usually when you see hear a song, the first thing that any anybody would hear is a singer. Yeah. Of voice was singer, but for me it was opposite. Mm-hmm. When I hear a song, I only heard the composition, only heard the arrangements, uh, the instruments, and everything. Else. That's that was my ear got tuned to that, I guess. So yeah, well, maybe that's the reason why. Yeah. Did you train your me. Did you train your voice after you started to get into it? Because you're a phenomenal singer, so it's just. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have. I'm not a trained singer. Uh, I, I while creating, while composing music for films. I used to sing my scratch scratches mm-hmm. myself uh, to present it to directors and producers. So while doing that, little bit, little bit, I learned while on the job. So I got, I guess, that made me a singer. But now I'm not a train, not a trained singer, or nor do I call myself a proper singer, singer because there are some amazingly phenomenal singers yeah. in the industry. Uh, so yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I disagree. And I, you you also um, I know you like to challenge yourself. Like for example, doing a, a, an album where the score is going to be American jazz, and you've never done jazz before. So I know you mm-hmm. love those kind of challenges. That's yeah. as far as the work. Obviously, you are very uh, eclectic, yet you still have a, a, a thing that specifically sounds like you. When it comes to what you listen to yourself, is there a particular genre you like more, or do you just listen to anything and everything? You know, guys, the the thing is Bollywood as an industry, as a mm. film, as a film industry, and as a, as a, at the same time music industry is it is so. I would I don't know how to say this, but for a composer in Bollywood, if you want to be want to be a composer in Bollywood, you have to be versatile. Mm-hmm. You have to be knowing different styles and genres because what subject will come and hit you, you, you don't know. Uh, so. Just for example, as you correctly said, jazz. Jazz. I am not a jazz musician. I have, I have no knowledge or no training in jazz as such. But then, a uh, filmmaker like Anurag Kashyap comes and tells me that you have to now jump into this territory and I, making a film is based on jazz, the proper old school uh, big band jazz. So, so then you, uh, you start learning. I started learning that. I started mm-hmm. uh, listening to a lot of jazz music, a lot of. You know, Ella, Ella Fitzgerald or Nina Simone, jazz, uh, you know, standard jazz and masters of 50s and 60s era. Mm-hmm. Started listening to that, diving deep. Every day I should only listen to jazz, and that's how I could uh, create a little bit of whatever I've created. I don't know, but uh, I created that. Uh, but yeah, so that's what Bollywood pushes you to do. Yeah, you, you have to be versatile. Otherwise. Uh, you have to say no, and you don't want to get work. <laughs> <laughs> is, yeah. is is that something? Because uh, a lot of actors will look for different roles that they've never done before. Is that something you do with uh, score, like uh, movies as well? You look for something, yes, a, yes. a challenge that you you've yet to do. Is that something that's important to you to be different? Yes, yes. It, every time, like after Bombay Velvet, the similar thing happened in Andadun. Andadun, while I was creating the piano pieces, the piano pieces were the first thing. <laughs> because Ayushman Kurana plays a pianist, so I had, uh, I'm I'm a decent piano player. I'm not like a pro pro. I'm not like all guns blazing. I'm a decent. I can play fine. But here, the uh, this guy is a pro. This particular guy, he's a he's a great piano player. He's a blind, mm-hmm. but he's a fantastic piano player, and he's a classical musician. So that was like a full again, once again, full study, uh, full again. Uh, Going back, listening to classical music, mm-hmm. uh, Mozart and Beethoven, and uh, so you now the requirement of the film. So from jazz, I'm jumping to Beethoven and <laughs> the, the, these genres. <laughs> right. So it's it's very difficult. It's very difficult. But 
but that's the challenge that I enjoy. Yeah. Let's see how how one can uh, how how much I can do, or how much I can you know give give away. And th- luckily, I was ma- able to do it because whatever pieces I created for Bandhu were very well appreciated, and directors love it, loved it. Uh, yeah. Aishman enjoyed playing it. It's it's uh, musicians for thought it is sounding authentic. So oh, wow, I I thought chalo. And yeah, it's just fine. Yeah. It's just, he's fine. <laughs> I'm doing it fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we we had seen uh, a piece where you were talking about the experience of working on the the film with Anya Rog and, and and immersing yourself in jazz. And I've always wanted to ask someone, and you were the perfect person to ask. When Corbin and I first started to hear Indian classical music, our first impression of it, having no knowledge of it, was, man, it seems like this is similar to jazz in terms of being free flowing but having structure and we've learned recently about ragas and the fact that they have these really intricate threefold structures but there's this freedom where we write is is it comparable i know they're very different in terms of modality and western music instrument but is there a, a similarity to the expressiveness as a musician and an artist with jazz and say indian classical or is that just what we're hearing and we're way off <laughs> It, this there is uh, there is a I, I believe there's a huge difference here with jazz you it's you have it's way way more expressive in terms of uh, notes it's open it's free you are you can fly in that but with Indian classical there are ragas which you have to stick to those stick notes. to those notes right yeah, you cannot move up if it's a uh, if one rag has only five notes right there are many ragas like that many ragas like that have just only five notes mm-hmm. so you uh for the authentic classical in indian classical uh, raga uh, if you want to perform an, a classical piece you can't go out of those five those five notes mm-hmm. if you are performing for 30 minutes the, for those 30 minutes whatever you can showcase in, with those five notes is your expertise is your uh, that's the magic that one mm-hmm. can create with. and there are some crazy amazing Hindustani and Carnatic classical artists in the country that they, they just do it brilliantly and amazingly well. Yeah. Whereas jazz, I would I would say is opposite. That's free. You can go anywhere from from any rag to any notes to any chord. You can just fly. It's right, so right, that, right. That that difference is uh, there. But as you said, the expression wise, feeling wise, they both give you that euphoria. They both give you give you that that feeling. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, awesome. Uh, you've worked in many different industries um is there a challenge or is it just a language that's that's the difference between the different industries or is there a difference in the music that you have to put out or- uh yeah, of course language is the challenge yeah language right. definitely is a challenge i have done the screen uh the four films for all for all the south regions Yeah. yeah so four thousand regions like um, uh, telugu tamil malayalam and kannada yeah mm-hmm. all four uh, i did b- b- with queen of course i did saira and v that only was that was only telugu this particular film had four different lang- regions eight songs each which made it 32 songs of a language that i have no idea of. i have no idea of. so that was a bit tough to do 32 songs of a language which you have uh, which is completely alien to you so obviously music is the biggest language here because uh, that's what i speak the language the only language i know how to speak <laughs> so there were writer there were writers there were directors there were what do you call those people god i call the next shit <laughs> translators yeah translators to yeah, yeah, yeah. So all those people a lot of people helped me out in that I was able, uh, able to do it, and I'm very, very happy that I was able to cross, you know, uh, that challenge as well. Because that was really challenging for me. Yeah. But then these people helped me. There's all these amazing people uh, helped me out, and I'm so looking forward to, to more now. Yeah. More uh, South Indian or any language, rather, any language. Yeah. And I'm I'm sure I'm sure you've been asked this question a lot um, because it's been like a focal point when people look at your career. We've talked with Anurag, uh, and we know from his own words that he only works with people that he trusts. 
how did you get involved with DevD? That was your first project working with Anurag Kashyap, Dev, yes? Dev Duel, yeah. yeah, so how, yeah. how did you get involved and then what was that process like? Because we love Anurag and feel like he is the quintessential artist who's willing to take risks. Uh, so we'd love to hear about that. Yeah, he, I love him too, absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, Shil, uh, Shilpa Rao is a common friend between me and Anurag. Shilpa Rao is a great singer. I mm -hmm. must have heard her. Yeah. She had met Anurag Kashyap uh, sir, uh, in a festival, film festival. There's a Mami film festival that happens uh, every year uh, in Bombay. She met her there and uh, they got talking and he asked her, okay, you, do you know somebody because I'm looking for a new sound and a person who can do <clears throat> uh, music for this new film that I'm doing, which is based, which is Dev Das. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm think I'm reimagining Devdas, uh, so I want someone new for this particular film. So do you know somebody? So Shilpa said yes. I was jamming a lot with Shilpa at that time. We used to jam a lot uh, during that those days. So she said I'll introduce you. So she took me to uh, Sir's house, Anurag Sir's house, and he I played him my stuff and my music, and he really liked it. Uh, Whatever he heard, he really loved it. So he, uh, he uh, spoke to me about this film. He gave me a brief narration of what this, what he's going to do with this Devdas, and uh, and then set me free and let me go. And said, go and do whatever you want. Mm. He does that. He always just lets you be. Just lets mm -hmm. you. Be. Uh, so I took, I took off and I took six months to create music of mm. the Devu. Uh, around six songs, like, like it took me six, six, uh, six months to do only six songs. I only could manage to do six songs for, uh, in six months. Wow. So, yeah. And after six months, I called him and I said, I have something. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Look, it's my first film. First time uh, I'm dealing with a filmmaker uh, for a film uh, as a film composer. So I was little, very, very nervous, very, very nervous. Because I, I didn't know where would it, where would this take me. Yeah. I was scared. I called him. I asked him, "Please come to the studio." He came with Vikas Bal. Vikas Bal uh, was the producer of Devdi. Vikas mm -hmm. Bal is now a very successful director himself. He's done Queen and Super Thirty and a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, so they both came in the studio, and I played my first track, and I was shivering. I was actually literally <laughs> shivering. <laughs> I was very scared, and then I played. I have and my I have uh, heartbeat was like. <laughs> cool. Pulse, pulsating, big time. Yeah. And, uh, I the first song got over, and I look at looked at them, looked at their reaction. Ah, have I have I done fine? And they were blown away. Yeah. And they were blown away. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Do you have anything else? So, yeah, I have four, five more. <laughs> <laughs> That's keep, awesome. Keep playing. Bring it on. Bring it on. I heard it playing. They loved. He loved all five so much. Exactly, without any change, it's there in the album. Exactly the way it is, uh, it, he's taken it in the album. And uh, uh, I was like, wow. And that's, yeah. that's where everything started. That's yeah. why I, he told me, so you are in the film, you got the film. Uh, yeah. Come tomorrow, come for the narration, proper full narration. And let's get going. And then, yes. Great story. <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. Did you, were you the one that came up with Nawaz dancing like Elvis? Is that uh, was that? Uh... <laughs> it's, all, it's all his idea. His, his, his brain size. So yeah, <laughs> we know, we know. Um, obviously, Anurag is a very different director in terms of letting artists just do what they they want to do. But in terms Absolutely. of other directors, how does a no? Because we're actors, so we know that the pitch meeting directors normally give to actors. But what's a normal pitch meeting to get you involved with a film of a, of a director? Do, are they more, usually, more, do they have a specific thing they want? Uh, or or what, what's the whole pitch meeting like for, for getting you on as a composer? Uh, so, um, each, director has the, each director has a different taste. Yeah. They have their own taste in music. So what I would, what I have done for Anurag Kashyap, not necessarily the other person or the director would like that style. Yeah, right. I, the, the one has to read that, you know, has to understand that. So I have to again uh, dig, uh, you know, dive deep and uh, understand his, pick his brain. Oh, 
what is his vision what is he looking at so he will say, so uh, different directors have their taste according to their taste one has to deliver that's a, another another challenge that i keep facing every now and then till date mm-hmm. <laughs> till date we are, that's the thing because every person has their own uh, way of looking at things yeah so so yeah so they hear a particular the pitch comes like the year, year of films work whatever for work that i've done they like it and they come to me i love i've loved your this work of, of, of this film that you have done i want you to compose for mo- music for my film but when they start doing music for their film you realize oh his, his requirement and his taste is different so it keeps changing with uh, from director to director yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, how did you we've um seen many things from coke studios mm-hmm. yeah everything we've seen from coke studios is beautiful yeah we're particularly impressed with how well the live sessions are mastered and produced for the video because that's not an easy thing to do it's a completely different animal when you have a live audience you're mixing for versus a studio uh, two questions about coke studios just wondering how you got involved and then second is it as wonderful to be involved with that process as it seems because it looks like it's just this majestic beautiful artistic time for everybody involved yeah absolutely perfect <laughs> the what what is said is exactly that it's exactly that it was a, so um, i am fortunate and lucky that i got to work with this amazing bunch of extremely talented musicians and artists that i worked with in coke studio and that energy of each and every person out there made that experience so majestic and beautiful that i should still cherish it and i wish that we can bring it back uh, uh, somehow but it, i don't know what yeah. what happened but those two seasons that i did i had a best time of my life mm. what a beautiful experience working on uh, coke studio uh, because that's that is something that you don't usually get to do uh, because i am a film composer i am primarily a film composer my mind uh, starts working when when i hear a situation when i hear a a story or a narration or a or some sort of vision for the director that my mind starts looking that uh, that way but here it's a completely open space where i am the director i have to take a call on what kind of music i want to what uh, expression i want to uh, put out so that was a new and a beautiful experience for me a very liberating experience for me uh, and uh, yeah so we did two seasons and you as you correctly whatever you said is exactly that uh, the, the feeling is still yeah. the same yeah um yeah. <laughs> yeah we we love coke studios coke studios is brilliant you know, i tech. i i want to tell you guys is that thank you thank you for i have i've seen all the videos uh, that you guys have reacted to oh really and and i, and I was oh. so i always and I, i always put a smile on my face whenever i see you guys because you you are very very positive and uh, uh the vibrant energy you both you both have got the way you react to uh, the music i just love it i just love it oh, thank I've you seen all of that thank you so much but and uh, chaudhry I, i think recently you did radhe also in yesterday or yeah yeah today yeah this yeah this week yeah ha huh, that was amazing that uh-huh. chaudhry uh, you guys did a few days back from coke studio Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you for the oh, uh, thank you, amazing reaction. <laughs> thank you for the music. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's. Um, so I want to. We we are big fans of uh, Vishal Bardwash, who is a famous oh. composer, yeah, composer gone director. Do you have any aspirations to do a similar transition into some style of directing or anything like that, or you? you... No. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. Not yet. No. Yeah. Not yet. A lot there's a lot to learn and do in music itself so yeah. I don't want to get distracted. Yeah. I would love to. I, I there are ideas that keep uh, coming story ideas. It yeah. It happens they come in my mind but then I don't go in that direction because is it it will distract me from my main job. Yeah. So sure, want, sure. Yeah. <laughs> And you you just mentioned a moment ago that one of the things that triggers inspiration for you is when you're given the vision of what the film's going to be and that immediately gets the wheels rolling. Absolutely. Um songwriters have different sources for inspiration and like you, I know you've written songs that have happened in one day and then sometimes it takes months for a song. Uh, <laughs> is is there um like actors have a process but I don't think a lot of people understand that 
songwriters and musicians also have a process uh, aside from being given the project and now you have this idea that's structured what are some of the other things that inspire you to write so yeah that's a very good for me it's literally having fun in life mm-hmm. traveling mm-hmm. meeting my best friends or friends and people who i like drinking with them talking rubbish talking bullshit uh, uh partying dancing i don't know just being happy men- uh, mentally in a very very happy and a positive space that inspires me to actually uh, and after all that when i once i go and sit in front of my computer or piano or a keyboard tak 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 things just happen yeah mm. so uh, uh it's for me i don't know everybody has their own way of uh, finding inspiration but these things really help me a lot yeah uh, yeah yeah well it it shows um i know corbin's going to ask you a question but you're the fact that you said having fun I think I said it in our last reaction to your music. You've said that in Motilana yeah. as well as in Radhe that it sounds so happy. The music sounds so happy. That was yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. So that uh, yeah, that's my that that's the internal uh, I want to I have to get into that uh yep, internally I have to feel that way. I have to feel yes. that way. Yeah. Well, it comes across all of yours. I've yeah. added songs of yours to to playlists, not just because they were so good musically, but because there was this essence about them. And the closest thing I could compare it to is when I've listened to the music of the Beatles. The stuff of Paul McCartney has this optimism in it all optimism. the time. Yes. Yeah, and you have yes. that trait, and it's one of my favorite yes. things about you as an artist. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I want to ask you, what do you think? in your opinion is your best work ah. <laughs> uh, i have said this before also i think and i, and I don't i don't think i've said it in the interview anyway outside but i've told my friends and all and my on my friends my family they believe it my best work that i have done it's not released yet oh it, i had done it in 2010 with uh, uh, the director called Oves Hussain MF MF Hussain the famous painter who is okay. uh, no more his son MF Hussain's son MF okay. MF Hussain's son uh, MF Hussain sir was producing it and his son was directing it his name is always Hussain so i did a film with him back in 2010 called pehla sitara and oh boy i just love that album i mm. i hear it now and i see I, have i made this not a possible <laughs> uh, and i love it it's so beautiful i think that's my best work and it's not come out <laughs> oh man is it just is it just stuck in is it just stuck in production no he's he's i i guess he's lost interest in the project i guess oh, i don't no. have, to, have to speak to him it's been 10 years it's, it's been 10 years now and yeah oh. if he doesn't do the project he just, just let you release that release the album yeah yeah absolutely yeah, i'm going to I have I have, I'm going to do that. I'm going to call him in this few days and ask me at least yeah. let me because now I have my own label, AT Azad, my yeah. own label I can release. Yeah. We'll, do that. We'll start Absolutely. a peti- we'll start a petition get that uh, get that album released. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have I have kind of a related question. That's based on the stuff that you've done. Is there anything you haven't done? Like for example, there was a day you had never done American jazz and you got the opportunity Are there any other things you've yet to try that you're like man I would love to try that someday? Oh, yeah. Rap. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, electronic electronic uh, electronic. Yeah. I'm um, absolute electronic hardcore electronic and rap. You yeah. did it you that, did you did some of it in Ota Punjab yeah. a little bit. Ha. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a bit. Yeah, that way, but I want to go all out, you know. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, that was uh, on yeah, you're right. Well that. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, can but I like how uh, like how the uh, Gully Boys? Yeah. That's that's what I was thinking of. I was like I bet you would have yeah. loved to have been involved with Gully Boys. Oh, I would love love some yeah. to do something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> kind of uh, kind, actually can I actually have you move your camera over a little bit? Okay. Right. No, like that, like that. Other way. Other way. Other way. Me right there. Because when when you lean for yeah when you lean forward I I don't get to see your face anymore, and we oh, want sorry, to sorry, sorry. no worse. Sorry. Um, off topic question: You're Gujarati, correct? Yeah. <laughs> Did you? We just watched our first Gujarati film uh, about a, a week or so ago. It was Hello Hello Hello. Hello Hello. Did Did you watch it? 
Yeah, I love okay. it. Okay. Okay. Did you did you enjoy it? Yeah, I love okay. it. I love that too. Yeah, and totally. What other Gujarati films should we watch? We have that's the only one we've seen. Uh, uh I've seen a lot. The uh, Gujju Bhai, uh, Gujju Bhai, most wanted. It's a very funny, uh, out and out uh, comedy film. Okay. Uh, Gujju Bhai, Gujju Bhai is a series, so that's amazing. Uh, then Gold Keri, Gold Keri is a film called Gold Keri. Uh huh. It's also a beautiful film. There are a lot of Gujarati films, and by the way, I am my first film Gujarati film uh, will be releasing next year. Oh and really? I'm most excited about that. I'm most oh, excited good. about it. Oh good! It's a musical. It's a proper musical. Oh good! <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> That's Wonderful. exciting. Yeah, that was an, that was another question we had. Was you know we we not only love what you've done, and we know we still have stuff to hear that you that you've done from the past, but we wanted to know what's coming up that we and the whole stupid family here would want to know you're excited about and we can pay attention to obviously that's one of those things yeah that, that film without the film is, okay. i'm very excited about that very very excited because it's a it's a it's a romantic film but it's very musical uh, music drives the film so i'm very happy to have uh, gotten that film as my debut film in mm. <laughs> that's wonderful yeah. uh, so the um i know your favorite composer is uh, Eo Roman. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, right. How does it yeah. feel that a lot of people now consider you in the same conversation with your hero or your 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 uh, the, your idol in in composing? How do, how does that how does that feel? I I do get that a lot a lot yeah. since the beginning I've been getting that it feels definitely it feels great but I know personally uh, that there is only one there is only one Eo Roman there cannot be another one mm -hmm. ever. Uh, well, because uh, I, as a musician, I regard him way. Uh, it's beyond everything. He's, he's like uh, what do you call him? a guru, god figure for me. So yeah, it feels great that people are uh, uh, say such things. But uh, for me, he's there's only one. There's only one. Yeah, mm. there can't yeah. be anybody else. <laughs> and what advice would you give to? Uh, up and coming composers who you are now their AR Rahman, you're their inspiration, <laughs> right? What what advice would you give to anybody specifically? You know, like you said, you can do a lot of things creatively, but your real focus and, and foundation is in is in scoring and doing music for film. So, if there's mm. someone watching you who wanted to get into film, wanted to do scoring, what advice would you give them to take that path? I. Uh, Oh, uh, for the to to, uh, to compose for a film? Yeah, uh, they wanted. They said, "I wanted. I want to compose for film, just like just just like you do." And 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 that's a career I want to have. I guess one one has to completely, hundred percent, you know, give everything. Uh, invest totally, completely invest mm -hmm. yourself. Uh, no distraction left. You have to just just like be like this and stay. True and honest to what you are doing to the crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I guess uh, because that's what I have done. I have only uh, look. I have not seen anywhere else. Just this. This is my been my one one focus and vision all my life. And uh, very very passionate. I'm very very passionate about composing for films. Any new film that I get get and uh, I feel very excited like a kid. I jump. And if it's a great story, a, a challenging subject. It just gives me a high, which is like as good as, you know, any. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that kind of high I get. So that that passion, that drive, one needs to have. That craziness, one needs to have. Uh, uh, and I, one, that's a lot of sacrifice. It, it's also you have to forget a lot of things. You have to discard a lot of things from your life. You just have to yeah. Focus here. Yeah, it's it's not that easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've done that. Yeah, all my life I've done that. So I've uh, missed out in initial stages. I've lost out on many friends of mine because I could never give them time. Mm. I invested so much of so 14 to 16 hours a day. I've invested for for months and years together. So that kind of dedication one has to put in. So that uh, I have done, and yeah. So that's the advice I would give. Yeah. So obviously, OTT platforms are huge now. 
Is that something that you're looking into, or do you do you just want to stick to film, or because what's your opinion on, no, on, no. on working on a project like that? I, I am doing two two series now. Oh, are you? Yes, yes, I am. Like, uh, b sorry, am I, am I? Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Uh, Bul Bulbul was one film that I did, my debut film on Netflix. The OTD, my first film was Bulbul. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. on OTD. It has only it had no songs. It was just a score. Yeah. Uh, so I had scored that, and now I have got gotten a lot of offers uh, for series. Yeah. Not just a, a yeah. OTD film, but series also, web series. So I'm doing two of them. Is it any different than uh, doing a, a movie, or is it just a longer process? It's a longer process. Yeah. Okay. Same thing as movie. Uh, everything remains the same, but the length and uh, the process is quite long. Yeah. yeah, movies. If I, uh, you are dealing with 120 minutes. Yeah, max, max, max 150 minutes, 160 minutes max to max. Here is, it goes to 350 minutes and beyond also. So mm -hmm. it's yeah, a longer, lengthier process. Yeah, is it also when it comes to the difference between the two? Like we've talked to actors and we know as actors the differences creatively when you're working on a film versus working on a series. And one of the universal things actors will talk about the preference of a series versus a film is the length of time you get to investigate and be this character. Yeah. Uh, it obviously has some of the, the side effects of these tighter time constraints. As a composer, do you uh, see also a similarity, whereas with a film, you have this 120 minutes and it's done and you're, you're over, versus a series is a long time and you have certain, you could write more themes for characters and you could express it and live in the show or is it not a fair comparison? Um, it's more, it, uh, honestly, it would be very early for me to say that because I've just uh, uh, started working on yeah. this particular uh, series for Amazon Prime and I'm just three songs down so far. Uh, okay. And there are around 10 songs, 10 episodes, every episode has a song. It's on Rena Musical. Uh, uh, so, uh, I've just just started doing three songs, and this um, coronavirus outbreak happened, and lockdown happened. Yeah, right. everything got shut. Everything we were, they were supposed to shoot in March, April, uh, and I had done those three songs then, and since then everything is on hold. Yeah. So nothing has moved uh, forward. So I am I'm still yet to you know understand how uh, how, how I would approach and uh, do this series. Yeah. 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 It's a new so, world. It's a new, completely new world for me. Yeah. As of now. Um, so I know you have a particular fondness, obviously, for Air Rahman's old um, scores, obviously, like Bombay uh, or, or Rocha or, or some stuff like that. Um, and I know you love like old school Bollywood music, and you think that was like the golden years. How, what's your opinion on current Bollywood music outside of your own? Um, What's your what's your opinion on the on the differences now? Current as in the past two three years, <laughs> the trend. <laughs> are you uh, uh, talking about the remixes and remix? The trend yeah. That, yeah. That well, it is. So yeah, that's not that's very not very healthy. And, yeah. Uh, it's not not in a that's not a good place to be in. So it's a very very bad situation, uh, and mm. this should stop. Yeah. And, uh, Remaking the old songs in the current films. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what the current Bollywood trend is. That the yeah. majority of, uh, of the films are every every film at least will have one or two remixes or remakes, which is not very encouraging. Yeah, uh, and not a good sign for the industry mm. on a whole in general. Mm. Right. So, so I hope that ends soon. And oh, thankfully, this <laughs> coronavirus and lockdown. Situation mm -hmm. has uh, put a good hold on it. <laughs> past four five months, no, uh, there is peace and shanti. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's so true. I just hope it continues. Yeah. Now I know early in your career, uh, you did. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You did some music for live theater as well, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, was that pre-recorded things that they played, or did you actually have a small band or an orchestra that was there for each show? Uh, both. I've done both. both. Yeah. yeah, I've done both. And so is, that, is that? No, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
it was another beautiful experience of my life uh, just three four years i've spent there uh, in theater theater industry and what a beautiful experience because so much to learn there's so much i got to learn from there mm-hmm. uh, and the whole idea of give you know composing music for a screenplay that the whole idea i learned from theater uh, mm-hmm. the and uh, because there are no visuals there it's just the there are there's nothing only script and only story that you have uh, you have to go over at, at the most you get to see rehearsals of the actors who uh, rehearse and you, mm-hmm. you see some rehearsals see, see the scenes how they have been uh, enacted and it's only one all in one room just just one stage everything is happening in one stage mm-hmm. so you have to imagine and compose music as for the proceeding of the story and the character and all that is amazing <laughs> amazing experience a lot of le- lot lot to learn from that yeah yeah and so besides ar rahman current or older who are the other composers that inspire you as an artist i think i i think i love everybody's work each and mm-hmm. every composer that we have uh, they have they have something really unique and special uh, and i love everybody's work like that starting from pritham da shankar is on live and a huge shankar is on live fan Vishal Bharadwaj, as you guys mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, fantastic uh, composer, filmmaker, uh, Vishal Shekhar, uh, great friends, great buddy, and amazing, beautifully, beautifully amazing composers, Salim Suleiman, Sachin Jigar, Mithun. I love Mithun's compositions also. Some mm-hmm. beautiful compositions. So there are some. I think everybody who's working and creating music is has something beautiful and unique in them, and I I I love uh, their compositions. Himesh Reshmiya, I love Himesh Reshmiya's compositions. Mm-hmm. I just love it. So, I guess the whole I, my, I, I am a lot of lot of people are there who I, who inspire me mm. uh, every now and then. <laughs> and I, I have another I have another question about your process as a composer and a writer. <clears throat> Obviously, this this might change if it's just a standalone song or if you're doing background music, but. Do you have a particular way you go about writing? Do you go down and sit at the piano? Is it the synth? Is it just you've got the melody in your head and you're writing words down, or is it just change and you just go with whatever inspires you? I just go with whatever inspires me. Mm. I just go with whatever inspires me, and uh, as I as I said earlier, if I'm traveling, if I'm you know doing some really fun stuff in life. Then everything starts. Just every, everything starts moving in my head. Yeah. Uh, Queen. I remember for Queen. Uh, I was uh, when I had to score the music for the Queen. Yeah. Director, the makers, specifically took me and Anvita, Anvita Dutt, the lyric writer, to Paris, to Amsterdam, because they were doing the recce there. So the film, major portion of the of the films were shot in Paris and Amsterdam. Uh, so they just took us along. Usually, no composers. Or lyric writers would be taken for recce, film recce. Yeah. No work. But then they just said, "Come and tag along, man." And I had so much fun. For that, those ten days, we didn't do, not. I didn't do anything. I didn't even think about music. Huh. I didn't even think about music. No, com- I forgot. I, I was a composer. I forgot it only because I was having such good fun, such good fun, such amazing time. Uh, you know, traveling, going around, seeing Amsterdam, seeing Paris. I felt out everything. Wow, this beautiful experience. And I came back, and then we went to Goa after that. Me and Anvita. That's it. In six days, the eight song albums were done. In six days, five five days, mm-hmm. five days, the whole album was done. Finished. Dang. Done. And done. Wow. <laughs> that's so. That that's the that's what happens with me. I I have have to be in that happy good space in life. <laughs> it shows in your music, yeah. man. It's, yeah. it's it's really incredible. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, I want to finish off by doing a little rapid fire questions here. So you just answer there. Nothing nothing too serious at all. It's just little fun questions. So, <laughs> coffee or chai? Chai. Uh, favorite alcoholic beverage if you drink alcohol? Wine. Ooh, what? I don't know if it's if it if it fits in the alcohol. Uh, <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wine, uh, only wine. Favorite Hollywood film? Oh, oh my God, so many. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> only one. <laughs> like you can name you can name a couple. You can say whatever. 
God. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. I'll talk. I'll just go to my childhood because as a child when I was growing up, and I was very small. I think I was ten, eleven years old, and I saw Jurassic Park. Mm. It was my first impression of a Hollywood film as such when I was a kid, and that blew me away. And that yeah. stayed with me till date. So I have seen all the uh, the Steven Steven Spielberg Spielberg has become like the the, the director for me. Yeah. Uh, since then, <laughs> so <laughs> he's my yeah, favorite too. <laughs> Oh Fav- yeah. yeah, favorite yeah. Uh, Hollywood composer. Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. That makes sense. John uh, Hans Zimmer. John Powell. There are many. <laughs> there's so many. Uh, favorite yeah. Indian film. Any region. Oh, on one. Uh, it, however, one? however many. <laughs> you can name ten uh, if you want. Oh, uh, well, very really difficult to name. Um, again, I will go back to you know because when you. Child, when you are growing up, that those become your impressionable years, you mm-hmm. know? and and those. Uh, so, uh, Lagan and Satya was. I was again. Mm. Uh, Lagan and Satya were the two films that I saw uh, while I was growing up. That, for me, those were the best films that I've grown up. Because that was for my from my from my age. From, uh, those films. I was what, around 10, 12 year old again once again. Uh, 10, 12 year old, mm-hmm. and I saw these amazing films and. They became my favorites. Both of those are incredible films. Great movies. Um, yeah. Uh, f- your favorite Hollywood actor? Hmm. <laughs> I such a. I I've never had any favorite actors or actresses in my life. No other Hollywood or Bollywood. I don't know why. Because I've been always since uh, since I was a child. I've been fascinated by musicians. Mm-hmm. Okay. A.R. Rahman would be my hero. Mm-hmm. Hans Zimmer would be my hero. Zakir Usab would be my hero. I don't know. Never gotten in, into any hero, heroines or actors or actresses. But mm-hmm. there are some amazing talents out there who do great work. Um, uh, Brad Pitt, ho gaye, then mm-hmm. uh, I, I recently saw this film uh, with Brad Pitt and Arya. Who? Uh, Quentin Tarantino's the latest film. Uh, well, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Once Upon a Time. Once upon a time. Upon a time. Uh, I, how can I forget that uh, Titanic hero's name? How how how, I, I, how can I forget? That another guy? Leonardo uh, DiCaprio. Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Just no. I just got blank. So yeah, right. I, I love his work. I love his work. Uh, I've seen Revenant. Also, mm. was incredible. Mm. So, a lot of a lot of his films are amazing, and he's a, such a great actor. Uh, what instrument are you most pro- prolific in? Uh, p- piano. Piano? I'm not prolific, prolific. I'm okay. <laughs> gotcha. Who is the greatest yeah. piano player of all time? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the jazz, Chick Corea, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Chick, Chick Corea is a jazz musician, uh, and I think yeah. he's one of the finest. Uh, yeah, there are many, actually. I can't. Think of many names I know, but Chikoya would be one. Cool, and the and the, the greatest guitarist of all time. <laughs> uh, I, one of them is Tommy Emmanuel. I, uh, again, when I was growing up, I've heard his playing yeah. guitar playing. It's, it's, it's terrific, terrific. Mm. Uh, of course, Steve Vai is out there. Yeah, yeah, we Mangsteen, Momsteen, then then who's that? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Huh? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Ste- <laughs> ah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I forgot his name. I, I, uh, he's a bald guy. Bald guy. I, I don't know why I'm forgetting names today. I, I <laughs> so much I've learned and uh, heard their music, and I'm forgetting the names. It's really ter- terrible. I'm so sorry about that. That's okay. Um, uh, they they usually perform together. I've seen when Steve Vai was here. Joe Satriani. Oh, Sat- yeah, Joe Satriani. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, so these are terrific, terrific guitar players. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking to us, man. It's been, it was a pleasure. Uh, it was a wonderful conversation, and we, we admire your talent so, so much. Um, and what you bring to films is so, so beautiful. And the fact that it's obviously um, a lot coming from the fact that you just like to have life experiences and be happy. And it just shows in your music, uh, and we really, really appreciate that about you. Um, so thank you thank so you, much. Thank you. Rick, Rick, go ahead. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, the same thing. We went from being introduced to you and recognizing your talent, first and foremost, and appreciating talent. And then the more we were exposed to your music, like I said earlier, the, the definitive uh, thumbprint that's placed upon the talent that is the, the positivity and optimism that comes out has made you for us one of the most exciting composers that's out there and mm -hmm. we you know there's actors if we hear that Nawazuddin and Siddiqui's in a film or you name several actors we're like okay we're gonna go see the movie if we hear that you are involved musically on a film we want to see it just because you're involved so yeah. we are big fans we're rooting for you, you. we want to know everything you're doing and wish you nothing but the best thank you thank you so much that's really really nice of you and um, I, as I said earlier also, I really, really love and enjoy seeing your videos. Uh, I've, I've seen not only mine, my reactions, of course, you've done a lot of my songs, as well, but others, others work as well. I, uh, I see whenever it, whenever I see uh, you guys featuring on my timeline, I just, just click it and I go and I enjoy oh, it. So, so is it, so is it safe to say that you would technically then be a stupid baby? You'd be part of the stupid family? <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So keep well, up that, keep up because that, what I really enjoy uh, about you guys is the same thing. That with the in this lockdown, in this, it's actually it's very uh, environment right now, as, especially in this country, is very negative. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, here too. Sushant, yeah, Sushant Singh and coronavirus and yeah, all sorts of. Only we get to hear only bad things. Yeah, but in the past six months. I have seen whenever I come across your videos and you guys talking about there's so much positivity and there's so much hope, which I feel mm. oh there are people who are happy. <laughs> that's <laughs> how we feel about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. In these, in these times you. also, you you need that. You need that energy. You know, uh, to feed off because you know how it is. What's going? Yeah. On. So thank you, yeah. thank you for doing all these uh, things. Thank you for all of course. Thank so amazing. Yes. Thank you so much, and let's get that album out as well. So, the, yeah, from the from the yeah, film, I'm we'll, we'll call him tomorrow. I'm gonna yeah. call the director tomorrow. <laughs> good, good. Thank you, man. Right. You have well, a great day. All right. Care. Thank you.